In today's video, I'll be showing you my Obsidian theme settings. I'll share my CSS snippets and provide you with a quick guide on how to apply them to any Obsidian Vault. If you're an Obsidian user not happy with your Obsidian theme, then this video might be for you. Join me as I walk you through my customized Obsidian theme. My Obsidian theme journey. When I first started using Obsidian, I went on a quest to find the perfect Obsidian theme. Theme. I didn't mind the default theme, but I wanted some more color in my headings as well as my plain text writing. And I wanted the italics and important points to stand out as well as call outs. So that made me stumble on the Cybertron theme, which is now called LYT mode. Now this theme is based on Cyberpunk 2077. So I quite liked the typography on this theme. We can see we've got some nice colors on the heading one to heading five. The plain text writing is quite easy to read. I also like the DM Sans font that it uses. If we're going to pick on anything, I didn't like the pink links that were set here. And I also didn't really like the bold, I thought it didn't really stand out too much. The ribbon customizations on the left hand side, I really didn't like. And I also didn't really want yellow dots on my calendar plugin. If I wanted to customize this theme, I had to create a CSS snippet and place it in my Obsidian Vault in order to make changes. So that was one thing I considered. But if we jump into the community plugin style settings, there's no settings in here to easily make customizations. So I'd have to hit the hotkey control shift I and then go find out what the element is called that I want to change. So that felt like a bit of a headache because I would have spent a lot of time looking for the name of the class. So my solution is to use the Microsoft Power Toys application. And this is a free download that you can either get from the Microsoft store or you can go over to the GitHub page and grab the application from there. Once you have Power Toys installed, you'll see it down in the taskbar and you'll have a little quick access palette here. The widget that I want to run is the color picker and we can see if I roll over there it says Windows key C and that brings up a little color palette. Then I can roll over my first heading one here and grab the color value by just clicking on it. So we can see we've got the hex value, the RGB and the HSL. So I just want the hex value. So I'll copy that to my clipboard, paste it next to my heading one. I just repeat that same process for the remaining colors to create my typography color palette. So now I have the five hex values for the headings that are used in this theme, which I quite like. I also like the plain text writing, so I'll grab the color code for that as well. So the next step was to navigate into appearance and go search for a new theme. Now I wanted something that was well supported, so it had to have a lot of downloads. That really just restricts me down to these first nine options here. And out of the first nine, the two that I liked the most was Minimal and Anu Pichin. So I downloaded those two themes. If we jump into the Minimal theme and say, use this theme. We're now using the Minimal theme. So we can see here I've got Minimal selected. Now if I scroll back down to my Style Settings Community plugin, you can see I've got a little Minimal drop down here. Then I click the drop down and that reveals all the customizations that I can make to this theme. So I wasn't able to do that with the LYT mode theme. So straight away I was like, well, this is going to work better for me because I can set everything that I want to set quite easily without having to write my own CSS or go find it in the theme itself. If I drop over in the headings here, I'll look at the heading one, H1 text color. And it's slightly off my value D7, D548. We can see that's still like the yellow, but I wanted it to be a little bit brighter. So I ended up going for this color value here, which is D9D617. And I was able to save that as my H1. Obsidian uses 
system fonts. So if we go manage, then I'll just select this one here and I'm going to hit save. That changes my font to inter. That one's not too bad. You can also change your interface font. So I could make that inter as well. If you've got any system fonts uh, that you'd like, you can apply them to your interface or the text font inside Obsidian. You can also change the font size so you could make everything a little bit bigger. I like to leave it on 18 because the style will already set most of the typography anyway. So how else can I make this look like the Cybertron theme without it being the Cybertron theme? Well, what I can do is I can add a CSS snippet to my .obsidian snippets folder. So you can see here I've got one that says Cyber theme. If I enable that, it's going to apply all the best CSS classes and settings that was on the IT mode kit, but I've taken out the yellow dots in the calendar plugin. I've also customized the link color from that pink color that I didn't like to a bluish color. So now I have a nice blue link. I've kept most of the typography the same, except I removed a bit of the shading. And now if I want to make a change, then all I need to do is go into my style settings, come down to minimal and make a change. So if I wanted a different color for my H1 here, then say I wanted it to be like a green, I could just hit save and that makes my heading one that bright green color. So I wasn't able to do that with the LYT mode theme because I didn't have the style setting feature. So this is good if you just don't really have time to write your own CSS styles. You just want to come in and set the custom color. So you can see here I've got a table. Now I've got a little class here that says table max. So if I take that out, it does adjust a little bit there because the minimal theme uses block types called tables. And if you come into the documentation here, you can see under tables. There's a few custom classes that we can use. So you can see here I've got table 100. So if I copy this one, and go back into Obsidian and type and put in table 100, that adjusts my data view query. I've also got table max, so I can take out table 100 and use table max. There's also a table wide and that just makes it a little bit narrow. So I can easily manipulate my data view query table widths which is good when there's a lot of information in there. Another thing I can do is if I jump onto my Cycles and Reviews dashboard, we can see here I'm missing some icons here. So if we jump back into my settings and go up to appearance and scroll down, you can see I've got this little CSS snippet that says Cycles Tack Reviews. So if I turn that one on, now I have some clickable buttons. So I can click into my daily habits. That is achieved with custom CSS as well. We can also see there's some more CSS classes up here. So we've got cards, col3 and cards. So if I take out cards, that filters my data view query like so. And then if I put the cards back in, that's what it looks like. I can take out table wide, make it wider. Or I could put table max, which does nothing. Table 100 doesn't do much either, but I settled on table wide because that's probably the nicest layout. You've also got this cards coals three. So if I take that out, then everything lines up like so. And you can do cards coal five, or you could do cards coal two, and that'll filter it with two columns. So this is all built into the minimal theme. So it just makes it nice and easy to use the minimal theme custom classes to manipulate my Obsidian Bolt. So I recently discovered the Anu Puchin theme. Correct me if that's the wrong way to pronounce it. You know, I like about this theme, it's got like these nice kind of rounded edges on callouts. Typography is quite good as well. We go into the style settings. We've still got like a little section for Anu Puchin and there's a few customizations that we can make to tables in there. This one thing I don't like about this theme is I can't use my table widths. You can see here table wide doesn't work anymore. Table max 
Cards won't work either, but there is an integration that you can do. So you can see here under integration, there's minimal cards integration. So there is a snippet that you can get from Campano's GitHub via this link. And what that does is it allows you to use the Caprano cards, which is this one down here. And then when I go into my cycles and reviews, I can still use cards to organize my cycles and reviews. I just can't use the table wide CSS classes like I would in minimal. So that's quite handy to have. These are my two favorite themes, but I still prefer to use the minimal theme because I can set my custom styles in here. I can also use my table classes and the card classes, which I use quite frequently. So let's see what else we can do. So we've got a note here that says six unsolvable life problems. So when I open a note, I don't like all my properties to show and I don't really want to always have them on the right hand side. So I created a CSS snippet to hide the properties and this is available for free on my Ko-Fi page. So we'll just turn off Capano's cards and turn on hide properties. So now my properties are hidden by default and if I roll over them, they show. And if I roll off, they disappear. So I find that one to be quite handy so I don't have all this information glaring at me all the time. Showcasing my CSS snippets. Let's have a look at the cyber theme, which is located in the snippets folder. We'll jump into visual code and we've got cyber theme.css open. So I've got a little comment up the top here. The simplified CSS extract from the Cybertron theme works alongside the minimum theme, which allows customization through both style settings and minimum theme settings community plugins. Then I've simply got a whole lot of class information here. And this is all being pulled from the Cybertron theme. The only difference is I've taken out what I don't want to keep and kept what I do want to keep. Now, taking out what you don't want is a little bit of a challenge because you've got to search through the elements within Obsidian to find out where each of these CSS classes are being used. The next one is Cycles and Reviews CSS. So this simply just pulls in my Cycles and Reviews icons from Imager, and I've done a video on this, how I use MetaBind buttons inside Obsidian. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. So this just simply pulls in these nine images from Imager using the CSS snippet that I've written here. So you can see I've got the daily icon here, got the weeks icon here, and it just goes and sets everything for each icon. I do have a CSS snippet for my habit tracker. I've got that toggled off at the moment. I've briefly gone through the hide properties and what that does. So let's have a look at that one. So you can see the hide properties is quite a small snippet of CSS. And the beauty with CSS snippets is if you want to test something, you can just place it in the snippets folder, then disable it, and then just enable it when you need to use it. If you find something useful on the forums or GitHub, and you want to try it out in your Obsidian Vault, but you don't want to break anything, this is a good way to do it. How to use my CSS snippets in your Vault. To install this custom theme on your Obsidian Vault, head over to my Ko-Fi page and download the free Cyber Theme. Once you've downloaded the Cyber Theme CSS file, simply copy it into your .obsidian snippets folder. And if you don't have this folder in your .obsidian folder, go ahead and create one. Then you just need to copy and paste that theme into your snippets folder. Then navigate to your Obsidian settings, select appearance, scroll all the way down to the bottom and under CSS snippets, go ahead and toggle on the theme that you just added. Once you've done that, Head over to Community Plugins, select Browse, go ahead and install Minimal Theme Settings. You also want to go grab Style Settings. Once you've installed those two Community Plugins, navigate back to Appearance, select Manage, select the Minimal Theme, 
and go install and use this theme, then it's just going to be a matter of dropping open the minimal toggle inside style settings, navigating down to headings and choosing all your colors. I recommend creating a typography page like I have. And for free fonts, Google Fonts is a good resource to get started. And all you need to do is once you've selected your Google font, just download the font, extract the font and double click to install it on your computer. And that will allow you to use that font inside Obsidian. I hope this video has given you some valuable insights into customizing your Obsidian theme. Now it's your turn to experiment and find the perfect setup for your workflow. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a fellow Obsidian user who might benefit. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.